Hello, Kyle here. I thought I'd give a brief introduction to the Darktable user interface. As you can see, the workspace is divided into three separate columns. The leftmost column generally gives you information about what you're working on, either file navigation, image information, recently used stuff, all that kind of stuff. The center window, and by far the largest one, is to display the content that you're actually working on. So this is where you're gonna be spending most of your attention. And the rightmost column will generally be allowing you to find the tools to work on the center column. Up along the top, you will have the light table mode. The light table mode is very much like a real life light table where it presents the images as slides to, for easy viewing and navigating. Uh, the dark room, here, let me just click on an image to bring it into the dark room. Dark room, again, very much like a real life dark room where it gives you controls for image manipulation. Tethering mode allows you to control the camera from your computer. The map, uh, if, you're, if your camera has GPS, this will display the images uh, that you've taken overlaid onto a map so you can sort of see where everything is. Um, and slideshow is just a slideshow. Um, I find tethering map and slideshow I never use. Light table you use every time to sort through photos, but the dark room is by far the most useful screen. Again, information about the image on the left hand side and tools to adjust the image along the right hand side. So in the dark room you will notice a number of icons along here. Uh, each one has a certain um, group that it goes into or a certain function in the editing room. The first two um, modules used in the active pipe, this is everything that you have going. These are your favorites. These are basic things like uh, rotation, exposure control, white balance, contrast, brightness, saturation, the very, very general filters. The tone group, this is what lets you control lightness and darkness in an image. You can make it brighter, you can make it darker, all that sort of stuff. The color group, these are where all the tools that allow you to adjust color are. Um, now, they have a little power icon that lets you know if a tool has been activated or not. So I've just activated this one filter. So, do that. So you don't have to manually activate each filter. Uh, it's deactivated by default, but as soon as you click on it, it uh, kind of wakes it up and brings it to life. So you can do all sorts of stuff. Double clicking generally resets things. Uh, the last one is the correction group. This has things like uh, sharpening, uh, lens correction, spot removal, um, hot pixels, chromatic aberration, uh, denoise, and the last one is the effect group. This is where you'll get things like watermarks, vignette, color mapping, which, uh, um, you know, you can simulate gradu uh, graduated density filters. Um, there's a fair amount of stuff. Also down here, there's the more modules. Each of these is one module. Uh, they have a large number of modules. Uh, you don't need to have them all activated. Um, I, in fact, I find having them all activated gets in the way. So I try to turn off as many as I'm not using to kind of keep the interface a little more minimal. I like it when the tools that I need are right there in front of me and I don't have to look through four irrelevant things to find one relevant thing. So once you've done all your editing, you can go back to the light table mode and you will notice that there is now a tiny little circle guy in the top right hand corner of your slide. It doesn't appear in all of them. That is to indicate that an image has been, um, has been modified. If you leave the mouse over it, it will actually show you what you've done. That's a good way to see how many changes you've made. Also when you're working on images, there are down and along the very bottom corner stars for ranking your photographs. I find this very useful. Um, there are also color tags that let you just tag an image. So see, I'll click, I'll click a few of these. 
And now it's just a little visual indicator that can mean whatever I want it to mean. Um, you know, if you're working on vacation photos, you might be able to use one color will be what you post to social media, another color could be what you print, and then another one could be photos that are safe to email to your mother. Along the very bottom here, you have this slider, and this controls the size of the slides you're looking at. Uh, some people like to keep it nice and low so they can get a good view of the image. Uh, I like to keep it I like to keep it around 18 or 19 so I can see a lot of slides all at once. Up along the top, you know, view. Uh, you can view images by star. You can view them different ways of sorting the photos depending on your needs. Also different ways to sort them. You can sort by file name, time, rating, ID, color label. Uh, also up in this corner, you'll find a G, which is for grouped images. Uh, if you shoot RAW plus JPEG, the images will have the same file name uh, with a different extension. And instead of seeing duplicates of every single image on the light table, it will kind of group them together as one. Um, it's It actually is pretty handy. Um, show image overlays. That just shows you, like, stars and groups and all that kind of stuff. Um, I usually keep that turned off. And finally, there's the little gear, which has actually become a fairly standard user interface, and that's global preferences, which will bring up a whole bunch of options. This is more advanced stuff that you probably don't have to worry about for quite a while. Alright, so that hopefully will cover the general Darktable user interface. Again, information along the left, what you're working on along the center, and tools along the right. And I'll go into more depth in each of these in the future. But uh, I think that's it for now.